could the use of an intranasal vaccine boost both systemic and local immunity? Could it address the issue of the waning immunity from mRNA vaccination? There's a big study out and we're going to talk about it. There has been much discussion during the COVID-19 pandemic regarding the ability of the novel mRNA vaccines to initially very effectively reduce the burden of disease and even reduce transmission. However, as the virus has changed, the data shows that the ability of the vaccines to reduce transmissibility, even post-vaccination, has now waned significantly. Given that preclinical studies of both SARS-CoV-2 and influenza have demonstrated that intranasal vaccination decreases both viral shedding and transmission relative to injectable vaccines, the use of a nasal vaccine that would induce mucosal immunity is one that researchers at Yale University have been studying. SARS-CoV-2, being a respiratory virus, is transmitted through the air and introduced into the body through the mucosal membranes found in the respiratory tract. By developing a vaccine that generates mucosal immunity, scientists at Yale University have been studying the possibility that inducing an adaptive immune response at mucosal sites can not only protect from severe disease, but also prevent infection. If this is in fact possible, this would greatly change the trajectory of the pandemic. To understand what scientists have discovered, we need to quickly revisit the concept of immunity. Innate immunity is immunity that you are born with. This type of immunity is non-specific to different pathogens and includes various enzymes, mucous membranes, your skin, stomach acid, and a variety of immune cells that help to protect the body from infection. Interferons and interleukin-1 are also part of the innate immune response. Adaptive immunity is a specific response to a specific antigen, something that the body recognizes as a foreign invader. The challenge with adaptive immunity is that this type of response takes time, a minimum of approximately 96 hours. Adaptive immunity includes B cells and T cells, which are specific to the invader, and it is this immune response that establishes immune memory in the body. The mucosal immune response is unique in that it offers both inductive sites, where antigen-specific B cell and T cell responses are initiated, and effector sites, where the adaptive immune responses are mediated. These inductive sites vary between species and between different mucosa. For example, the immune response in the gut mucosa is different than the immune response in the respiratory mucosa. When an antigen or foreign invader, in this case a, a virus, enters the respiratory tract, it must penetrate the mucosal layer and gain access through the epithelium. If successful, the virus travels through the next layer, the lamina propria, and from there can be transported through blood and lymph tissues to distal sites such as other organs. Indeed, studies now show that SARS-CoV-2 has now been found in almost every tissue in the body, thus stopping the virus before it can enter the mucosa would be incredibly beneficial. Importantly, though the mucosa immune responses differ in different areas of the body, they are able to cross talk or communicate between different mucosa. And thus, an immune response generated in the respiratory tract, in this case by a nasal vaccine, would promote an immune response at distant mucosal sites in the body. To date, all COVID-19 vaccines are given via injection and intramuscularly. According to head researcher Dr. Akiko Iwasaki, the immune response generated by this type of vaccine is robust and able to generate consistent systemic T and B cell responses. These responses are effective in inhibiting viral spread and disease. However, to block infection, there must be immunity at mucosal surfaces. If you're getting value out of this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. I appreciate your support and it really helps me on the channel. Intranasal vaccines are nothing new. The nasal vaccine that has been available in Canada for multiple years to combat influenza has demonstrated good efficacy in preventing seasonal flu. However, these vaccines have their challenges. In order to stimulate an effective immune response, these vaccines are classified as live vaccines. They are unable to cause disease, but they are also unsafe in those who are immune compromised. Inert antigens on their own do not produce an adequate immune response and would require the use of an adjuvant, which is not safe for this type of nasal delivery. Scientists at the Iwasaki lab tested multiple boosting agents, including a biodegradable 
non-inflammatory mRNA lipid nanoparticle, as well as a purified spike protein that had been stabilized. By using the simplified spike protein as a nasal vaccine after an initial intramuscular mRNA vaccine in mice, both delivery methods showed evidence of a significant boost in nasal, lung, and serum IgA and IgG antibodies and resident memory B cells. It should be noted that intranasal spike without a dose of mRNA did not induce antibodies or T cells. Thus, the approach here is dependent on the initial dose of mRNA followed by an intranasal boost of spike protein. With this approach, scientists observed significant CD4 tissue resident memory and spike-specific CD8 TRM. This response was noted in every respiratory compartment and viral load was also significantly decreased. In an attempt to mimic waning immunity, they also compared how well this approach compares to only one dose of mRNA and gave the mice a low dose of mRNA vaccine initially, followed by the intranasal spike protein. 42 days later, they challenged the mice with a lethal dose of SARS-CoV-2. The results made it very clear that by priming the mice with mRNA intramuscularly at a therapeutic dose, followed by intranasal spike protein, all mice were protected from disease and death. This approach also significantly reduced both nasal and lung viral loads. As lead scientist and researcher Dr. Akiko Iwasaki said, these immune cells are waiting in the nose like ninjas. They know what to look for because they've seen it before. The results of the study show that both the unadjuvanted nasal spike vaccine and the biodegradable mRNA nanoparticle they tested are effective in boosting mucosal immunity in hosts who are initially primed with conventional mRNA. This includes the ability to reduce actual infection and thus prevent disease. The ability of the prime and spike approach to establish tissue resident memory T and B cells also shows that this approach is able to confer long lasting and cross reactive memory that can be quickly re stimulated to prevent viral spread. But what about the challenge of new variants? Scientists then studied whether using an intranasal boost that was different from the original mRNA would stimulate a cross reactive response. SARS-CoV-1 is a related virus, and its spike protein only shares 76% homology with the original SARS-CoV-2 spike sequence that is encoded currently by the mRNA liquid nanoparticle vaccines. This challenge proved successful and indicated that intranasal boosting with unadjuvanted heterologous spike protein can induce potent mucosal cellular and humoral memory against significantly divergent spike protein. This is great news for protection against future variants of concern. Essentially, the prime and spike approach is one that involves the use of a non-live vaccine that can be safely used in the population by leveraging immunity from primary vaccination. The result is robust immune memory in the respiratory tract, including a robust response of T and B memory cells. By stimulating the immune response in the nasal tract, systemic immunity is also boosted, offering complete protection and also inducing cross-reactive immunity. Most recently, Zanadu Bio has secured licensing from Yale for the production of the polymeric nanoparticle delivery platform to support the project. This type of technology could potentially have future applications for influenza, RSV, and even cystic fibrosis. The next steps for these researchers will be clinical trials in larger animals and eventually in people. So what should you take away from this video? Number one, this is the first time that mRNA has actually been successfully used as an intranasal vaccine. Number two is that it creates a very fast way to produce a vaccine that can be used nasally that is specific for the particular variant that is circulating. And number three is that this type of immunity stimulates both local mucosal immunity as well as systemic immunity and thereby reduces transmission and infection. I hope this has been helpful. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.